Amen. We want to thank you for tuning in here for What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Yeah. I want to say we appreciate you for tuning in and listening to us and appreciate all these that's in the studio here with us. This morning, we appreciate everybody that comes and, and is a part of it. Brother Larry, he comes all the way from uh, what Paint Rock, all the way from Paint Rock, Alabama. He comes over to be with us every, every service. And Amen. Brother Ricky, he's with us. He's going, they're going, they're going to come around here in a little bit, and they're just going to give us the Word of God. Amen. Yeah, I tell you, that's what we need. Amen. In this day and time, the world does need Jesus. Yeah, Amen. We all got to have him, and the only way we're going to make it to heaven is is by the blood of Jesus Christ. We must be covered by the blood of Jesus. we got to go by the way of the cross, folks. You can't go no other way. Yeah. Only way we can go is by the way of the cross. Amen. Amen. The only way you can go, you've got to go just like I've got to go. Amen. Amen. Brother Larry, you've got to go just like i got to go. Amen. We all got to go the same way. we got to meet right down there. But you know what I like about the foot of that cross? Yeah. The thing I like about the foot of that cross is we're all the same Ooh, when we get there. <laughs> Glory to the... You see, we measure things in this world. Yeah. We measure things. Some people's rich. Some people's poor. Some people's big. Some people's people's little. Some people's got it. Some people don't have it. But you know what? I, whenever you come to the foot of the cross, it don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter how much money you don't have. It don't matter how big your house is or how little it is. <laughs> it don't matter if you're a big old person or if you're a little old bitty person. Amen. It don't matter if you got hair or if you don't have hair. Amen. It doesn't matter to Jesus. Jesus just said, come to the foot of the cross. Amen. And Jesus said, if you'll come to the foot of the cross, we're all the same. Amen. We all leveled off right there at the foot of the cross because it takes Jesus, amen, to make it to heaven. And it don't matter how much money you got, you can't buy your way there. Hey Amen. You can't, you can't climb up. No other Bible says if you try to climb up any other way. Hey, hallelujah. Says if you try to climb up any other way, says you as a thief and a robber. Amen. You, gonna, you ain't going to make it, friend. We got to go by the way of the cross. We got to go by the way of, of Jesus Christ. And I want to say this morning that we do appreciate you. Yes. For tuning in and listening to them because what we want to tell you about is we want to tell you about Jesus. We want to tell you about somebody that can help you today. I mean, we want to tell you about somebody that can help you in your problems, in your troubles, and in the things that you go through. You see, you see, not only does he, not only will Jesus save you. He said, I'll give you life, and he said, I'll give it to you more abundant. Not only will he save you, and not only will he just give you life eternal, but he'll give you life down here on this earth if you'll let him. Amen. He'll give us the things we need down here. Oh, you see, he'll go with you through your problems, your trials, and your troubles. You see, the thing about it is when you get saved, that don't make you exempt from trouble. That don't make you exempt from problems. You see, we still got trouble. We still got problems. But the good thing about it is Jesus said, I come that you might have life and I come that you might have it more abundantly and my friend I'm here to tell you today that whatever you may be going through today my friend Jesus Christ is here he's there and he just wants to reach down and pull you up above your circumstances Amen. Amen. <laughs> glory to the Lamb of God I don't know about you but I just get plumb beside myself Amen. Get thinking about what Jesus does for us and the things that God can do for us and how how that all, all the troubles and things that we go through, and how that God just goes through it with us. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think about them old three Hebrew children over there. Whenever they, whenever they went through that fiery furnace, you see, Jesus, he didn't, he didn't reach down and snatch them right out of that fire. No, he didn't. And he ain't going to reach down here and snatch you out of your problems either. Amen. You see, Jesus, the, the, the Bible says that the king walks over and looks over in there and he says, I thought we throw three men in that fire. Oh, but he said, well, I see four. And that fourth one looks like the Son of Man. Let me tell you something, my friend. Jesus Christ will walk through your problems. He will walk through your trouble. And he will be right there with you. Hallelujah. All the way. Amen. You got to be saved. You got to be a born again child of God. Amen. Amen. Let Jesus Christ, that good old great Holy Spirit, come in. The Spirit of God begin to move on you. Let the Spirit of God begin to lead you. And God, you didn't know Jesus said it's expedient that I go away. But He said if I go away, I'll send you another Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. That will He said He will lead you and guide you and teach you through all truth. 
and he'll do it. Amen. Brother Ricky, he'll do it. Yes, Friend, Jesus will go with you. He'll walk through the fire with you or he'll walk through the roses with you. <laughs> Either way, whichever way you're going, wherever you're doing it. And friend, if you're listening to this broadcast today and, and you're going through a rough time, you're going through a bad time, just look up. Just look up to Jesus because Jesus said, just, 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 put, just put it on me. Just lay your burdens down upon me. Amen. Glory to God. I, I don't know about you, but I'm glad today that I'm serving a living God, not a dead God. He's alive. You see, Jesus rose on that third day. Yeah. He rose on that third day for a reason. Amen. He's the first fruits of the resurrection. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of God. One of these days, he's going to bust that sky wide open. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but when he does, old brother Ronnie's going to be with him. Amen. That's up to you now. Whether you go with him or not, it's up to you. But friend, Brother Ron is going to be with him. I know how hey, you know, Brother Ron, because I've done done what the Lord said to do. Yeah, Amen. I've already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart. Let that great Holy Spirit of God come on the inside. And my friend, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord, and he is King of Kings, and he is coming back. Preach it, brother. That's right. Coming back after a church. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of God. He's coming back, friend. Yeah. And he's coming back after his people. He's coming back after that one that's blood bought. Yeah. Bought by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. And man, we appreciate Brother Ricky and Brother Larry. Brother Larry's going to come after Brother Ricky. And yeah. we appreciate Brother Ricky for uh, uh, being with He's been with me from the beginning of this thing. He's with me on the when we had the radio broadcast. Oh, Brother Ricky, he's coming right along there. And he's a, he's a teaching God's word, preaching God's word, whatever you want to call it. Amen. He's a telling you about Jesus. Amen. And I'm proud of him. And I'm glad. Amen. That he's in there. Now, now we want you to just worship with Brother Ricky as he brings us some word. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. I'd just like to say I love the Lord this morning. Yes, sir. I love him for what he's done for me, what he's going to do for me, and what he can do for you. Amen. Amen. The Lord loves you today. Yeah. All you have to do is ask him into your heart, and you'll be saved and on your way to heaven with the rest of us. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes today about, about Peter, a, a disciple named Peter. Amen. Now, Peter was a fisherman by trade, amen. He was, he, when he meets Jesus, he was just a normal person. He was fishing, trying to make a living, amen. Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee, and he saw Peter in his boat, amen. And Peter had been fishing all night and had caught nothing, amen. Now, Jesus gets in his boat, and he tells Peter to thrush out a little bit from the land. And Jesus was teaching the people from his boat, amen. When Jesus had finished teaching, he told Peter to launch out into the deep and let down his nets for a drought. Now, Peter said, I have toiled all night and caught nothing. Amen. Amen. Peter said, I have toiled all night and caught nothing. But if you tell me to, to let my nets down, I'll go on what you say. Amen. Just because you said it, I'm going to let my nets down. Amen. And when he had done this, this enclosed a great multitude of fish. Amen. Can you imagine what Peter felt there? He had been fishing all night. Jesus gets in his boat and says, drop your nets and a whole multitude of fish comes. Amen. Glory to God. Now here's Peter. He's, he, he, he's a fisherman and he knows how to fish. Amen. He knows what he's doing because he does that for a living. Amen. And Jesus gets in his boat and instantly... Instantly, great multitudes of fish come. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now, he, they was so many fish, they, he had caught so many fish that he had to call his partner's boats over and put fish in his partner's boats. And, he, and they filled the, the, both of the boats Amen. until they was ready to sink. Amen. Amen. Jesus does a miracle here showing his power over nature. Yes. And Peter sees it, amen. He falls down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinner. Man, O oh Lord, amen. Now Peter knows who Jesus is, and Jesus tells him, Follow me, and I will make you fisher of men, amen. Not a fisherman, but fisher of men, amen. Jesus and his disciples are going around teaching and preaching and healing and, and, and preaching the gospel, and they come to Peter's house, 
and saw his wife's mother laid sick with a fever. Amen. Amen. And he touched her, and the fever left her. Amen. Ooh. He all he had to do was touch her, and the fever left her. Amen. Amen. Jesus just touched her, and the fever was gone. He didn't. He didn't go get medicine and give to her. He didn't call the doctor. Hey, Amen. He is the doctor. Glory to God. Yeah. He just touched her and her fever was healed. Hey, Amen. Maybe you need just a little touch from Jesus today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't have, it don't have to be a sickness. It could be, it could be dealing with something in your life. It could be your kids, yes. your family, but Jesus can help you with that. Amen. All you have Amen. to do is call upon the name of Jesus and he can help you. Amen. Amen. Now in Matthew 15 and 25, the Bible says, On the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Amen. And when, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out of fear, for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, amen. Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Glory to God. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come out onto the water, amen. Now, now Peter's just asked the Lord, if it's him, bid me to come out on the water, amen. And he said, come. And Peter was come down out of the ship and walked on the water, amen. He, was, he come out of that ship, Focused on Jesus, and he was walking on the water, amen. amen. But, but then, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, amen. When he yeah. saw all the winds and the storms around him, yep. he got scared, amen. Yep. He got, got, his, got his mind off of Jesus. He got his focus off of Jesus, uh -huh. and he got scared and began to sink, amen. And he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Amen. Now, how many of us have stepped out, on a, out of our boat? How many of us have stepped out and begin to come to Jesus and begin to, to do something for Jesus? And we let the problems of this world, yes, we let the problems of this world, just like Peter, yeah. he saw the wind and got his mind off Jesus, yeah. got his focus off what he was doing, and he let the, he let the winds and the storms take him away from what amen. Jesus was doing, amen? And, and then he started to sink, amen? That's where we get sometimes in this day and time. Yeah. Hey man, we let the things of this world get our mind off of Jesus yeah. and we start to sink. Hey Amen. But the good news is, glory to God, the Bible says in verse 31, and immediately Jesus stretched out forth his hand. Hey Amen. Jesus stretched out that big loving hand he has, stretched it out and got Peter. Hey Amen. He called him and said unto him, O ye of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Hey Amen. It's easy to get our minds off of Jesus this day and time, but, but when we do and start to sink, Jesus will immediately reach his hand out for us. Amen. He, he, just like for Peter, he'll reach his hand out for me and you. Amen. Now we go to... Uh, 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 now we go to when Peter denies Jesus. Amen. Peter, when you, when you ask somebody what, what, what do you think about Peter, if you, do you know Peter or what he's done or anything, the first thing they say is Peter denies Jesus. Amen. He denied him three times. Amen. The, the right, that's right, Peter does deny him three times and Jesus tells Peter he will deny him three times before the cock crows the very day that on the crucifixion. Amen. Now in Matthew 26, Starting verse 69. Now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. That's the first time, amen. And when he was gone out of the porch, another maid saw him and said unto him that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. And again, he denied with an oath, I do not know him. That's the second time, amen. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them. For thy, for thy speech betrayeth thee. Amen. His speech was a Galilean. They was all Galileans yeah. except Judas, amen. Yes, then began he to curse and swear, saying, I know not, amen. 
And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the words of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Amen. Amen. And he went away and wept bitterly. Amen. Peter, Peter was no doubt feeling bad about what he had done, and Jesus was about to be crucified. Amen. Now Jesus is crucified on the third day has come, and Peter is still in doom and gloom, feels like he's no good to anyone, can't, can't be a disciple no more. He's just down and out and can't do it. Amen. He thinks to himself, well, I'll just go back to fishing because that's what I know to do. Amen. That's how I know to make a living and just go back and go to fishing. Amen. Amen. So Peter and some of his disciples got on the boat and finished all night, fished all night and caught nothing. Amen. Does that sound familiar? Now, now the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples didn't know him, amen? And Jesus asked the children, Have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find, amen? They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it up for the multitude, for the multitude of fish, amen? I believe this is familiar to Peter, because this has already happened once, and when Peter met Jesus, Jesus told him to put his net in, in, and there was multitudes of fish. Amen. Now, the Bible says in John 21 and verse 14, starting in verse 14, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Amen. So when they had denied Jesus, saith to Simon Peter, Simon, Son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Uh -huh. And he saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Amen. Amen. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest all things. Glory to God. And, and thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Amen. Peter denied Jesus three times. The disciples denied Jesus three times. And Jesus asked Peter to do, does he love me three times? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Matthew 28 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Yes, sir. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Glory to God. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always. Amen. That tells me he's with us all the time. Amen. He's with us all the time. Even unto the end of the world. You're a winner either way. You, you, if you die, he's with you. If you stay here on earth, he's with you to the end of the world. Amen. Glory to God. Everybody makes mistakes just like Peter did. Amen. But Jesus still loves you. And he still wants you to be saved. Amen. Now we let Brother Larry come and... Oh, thank you, Brother Ricky. Hey, Mike. I'll teach you a little bit today if I can. If I break out into preaching, well, that'll be all right, too. Now, Brother, Brother uh, Ronnie got up here, and he opened up this message, and he began to preach. You see, he began to preach the Word of God. Now, I want to talk to you about order. You see, the Bible says, let everything be done decently and in order. That's 2 Corinthians I'll just tell you where it is. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. It's the very last part of that chapter. Let everything be done decently and in order. You see, when Brother Ronnie got up here and preached, he preached decently and in order. He yeah, preached the like word of God that was put into his heart. When Brother Ricky got up here and he preached and he taught the word of God, yeah. he taught in order. Not man's order, God's order. Yeah, you see, there's a God. difference. 
You give mankind something, and in about 15 minutes, he'll have it tore all to pieces. No earthly idea how to put it back together. You put your hope and your trust and your faith and your future in God's hands, and he'll direct you in an orderly and a timely and a patient fashion. All right, go with me. Let's just start here right quick. We're going to 2 Timothy, familiar scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Now, I can quote that scripture, but you know what? I like to read the Bible. That way I don't get it wrong, bless God. We're going to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I'm headed there right now. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, and it says, according to the word of God, study to show thyself approved yes. unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, that's order. What you're doing is you're, you're in the Word of God. We must be in the Word of God. And if we want to know what God thinks about something, it's written down in His Word. Timely study of the Word brings order to your life. Yes, it brings God. godly order. Yes, I'm telling you what, you can rest in the Word of God when you do things God's way, when you set things in order the way God said to put them in order. I keep using that word, but you must do it in the order God says to do it. Brother Ronnie told you there's no other way to get to heaven. Brother Ricky told you the same thing. You must go to Jesus. That's yes, the order Lord. that God laid out for you to come back to him. He said, I must make a way for my children to come back to me. And that order is Jesus. He'll yes. be born of a virgin. He'll come here and walk a perfect walk. He'll be tempted in every possible sin. You see, there was sin now that there wasn't sin then. They're doing things now that they never thought about doing back then. But Christ was tempted. Here I go. Christ was tempted the same way that we're tempted today. I want you to know, hey, there's diseases out today that wasn't back there then. But do you know when Jesus Christ went to the cross for you and me, all that sin, all that sickness, and all that disease was placed upon him. There wasn't no such thing as age back then. They have age now. I want you to know that sickness of age was placed upon Jesus at the cross. Every single possible sickness, sin, and disease was placed upon Jesus at the cross when he said he paid it all. He paid it all. Hey, now, look out. Now y'all go with me. I got I got a little bit of time here. Y'all go with me. Let's go to let's go to the Gospel of John. Ooh, chapter one, verse one. I'm gonna show. You. I got something to tell you. And I got I got to get this because y'all gonna love this. Oh, this is so cool. God's a God of order. Remember that. We're gonna go to First John. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord God Most High. I'm so glad y'all tuned in today. Y'all are oh oh praise the Lord God Most High. Gospel according to John. Chapter 1, verse 1, in, I want you to know in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Do you know, let me go over here, y'all don't have to turn. Genesis chapter 1 says, in the beginning God. Look at here. In the book of Moses called Genesis, the creation, chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God. Look over here in St. John, chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yes. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. Jesus, the Lord, our Savior, was right there with God when the Word was spoken and the universe was formed. That's order. They stood there together. There was the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the Word of God, and nothing, something came out of nothing. It's hard for us to understand there was nothing there, and all of a sudden there was something there. That's because the Word of God was spoken. I'm telling you today, if you'll take the Word of God and speak it in order, listen, listen to people out in the world. They speak all manner of foolishness. They put people down and they curse and they, they, they don't even, they curse and bless in one sentence and don't know what they're doing. But they will curse people and not just curse words. They'll speak against their life and not realize it. I come to you today to tell you to speak the word of God. 
Why don't you open your mouth up and speak, God? Listen, i got to tell you this right quick. I had a fig tree. thought it was dead from the last two harsh winters we had. I went out there and took a saw and cut it down. And I said, you know, I'll just burn it out and put another fig tree. Thanks, sir. I'll put another fig tree. Well, look here. I, I heard the Lord speak to me in that small, still inner voice. He said, why don't you speak life to it? Every time I started driving on the lawnmower, take the dogs out. I said, fig tree live. In the name of Jesus, I want you to live. I love figs. They're so good and good for you. Let me tell you what I started to see. I started to see a little tiny leaf down in there. Yeah, and then I began to clean the thing out. Like the Bible says, I brushed it up good and cleaned it and fertilized it. Give it a bite to eat and a drink of water. I want you to know that fig tree is three foot tall and flourishing because I spoke life into it. I'm telling you today, speak life, yeah. speak Jesus, speak the word of God into your circumstance and situation. And then, this is not blasphemy. You should expect God in all humbleness and humility to act upon your situation and yeah. circumstance. Because he said he would. Yeah. Oh. He, take him at his word. Yes, That's God. what he wants us to do. Take, he said, take me at my word. Yes. See if I'll not, you speak my word in truth, follow me, and see if I'll not perform the words that I said I'd perform. Oh, Bless God. God. Yes. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, now I'm going to get, we ain't got that much time, got to get to this. Let's get, go to Psalm 118, verse 8. I'm going to tell you right now, God is a God of order. If you don't think so, I'm going to prove it to you right here. Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence yes, in the man. Sir, right, Do you know there's a specific thing about that verse? Come on. That is the middle of the Bible. Did you know that? Psalm 118 verse 8 is the absolute direct middle of the Bible. Did you know it is sandwiched in between Psalm 117, which is the shortest chapter in the Bible? Only two verses. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible, 176 verses. There's 594 verses to the left of that Psalm 118, verse 8. There's 594 verses to the right of Psalm 118, verse 8. If you add 594 to 594, you get 1188. Don't tell me my God's not a God of order. That's exactly on the button. And look here. Check this out. Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Do you know what the exact middle two words of the Bible are? The Lord. Yeah, man. Glory to God. That's what the word, that's the exact yeah, middle of this Bible that's been put together over hundreds of years, written over here and written over there. The Lord. That's the exact middle of the Bible. Amen. You think my God's not a God of order? You think today that you're in a circumstance or a situation that the Lord God Most High can't get you out of? You listen to me. Yes, you listen to me real good. God loves you. Yes, he does. He's for you. He's not against you. He's not mad at you. You know when Jesus died on the cross and got his arms out like this right here with those nails in his hands? He still has them out like this. He's telling you, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friend, if I thought it would do any good, I'd get on my knees in a crowd of a thousand people and beg you. Call upon the name of the Lord. He's, you see, he's ever mindful of us. Let me tell you something. God's always thinking of you. Let me tell you, if he stops thinking about you, you're gone. Out of everything God's got going on, he's thinking about you. He loves you. He's got his arms extended out to you, my brothers and sisters. He says, come to me. I'm not mad at you. He'll wrap his arms around you. He'll forgive you. He'll heal you, save you. He'll set you free. And you talk about prosperity. You'll have prosperity. Not, not money. Forget about money. It's just a tool. You, I mean, you need money, but that's not what we're after. You'll have prosperity in every area of your life. Oh, every area of your life. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for tuning in today.
I hope we've made a difference in your life. I hope you take the word of God. Don't listen to us. Listen to the word. Get into the word. Find you a church that preaches the word of God. And if we can help you, send us your prayer request. I should have said that. I should have asked first. But you say, if we can pray for you, tell us. Yes, I'll pray for you. Prayer is the best thing you have. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, what the world needs is Jesus. Yes. Amen. And what the world